Good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. Let's all, let's do what? Let's get a song, Brother Chris. You ready? All right. Come on, let's get a number. What is it? Oh, yes. It can be pretty good here if you let it. Amen. You ain't got to wait to get to heaven to enjoy Christianity. Amen. Let's go to meeting.
Amos chapter number 18. Amos chapter 18. Put your finger on it. And then 2 Samuel 22. I don't know how much of it we'll read. Many young brides sought for love songs, their special day when they were to be wed in holy matrimony. Matter of fact, most of the weddings that I have performed have been, most of them have had some type of love song in them. Just be personal about it. My wife sang to me at my wedding. I don't know what she sang to me. Couldn't care less. She sang to me the theme song from the ice castles. Looking through the eyes of love. I thought it was pretty special then. Love songs. If I were to pull the congregation tonight and indulge some of our past where, don't, don't get too critical on me now, we've all got a past, and if you weren't a part of that past, then be thankful that you're not. This will go over most of these young married couples' heads, but we, we had a list, Brother Muse, of love songs of our day, love songs, you all heard them, uh, my all-time favorite. I'll give the artist, you name the tune. Y'all ready to play? Y'all want us to go home now? All right, let's play. Now raise your hand if you know the answer to the love song. I'm going somewhere. Percy Sledge. Vince. What? Nope. When a man loves a woman. I see you back there, Karen. You hang on, I got something coming your way. When a man, everybody, saved and unsaved, we all remember that song. I mean, do you young whippersnappers, do you even hear, do you know the song? Do any of y'all know that song, When a Man Loves a Woman? You don't know what you're missing. This, this crowd, y'all got singing y'all a song today. Well, I hope y'all ain't listening to it. But they, they didn't have a clue what love songs were. Percy Sledge nailed it, didn't he? All right, uh, Dolly Parton. Vince, I ain't calling you no more. Gwen, I will always love you. What a what? Nobody done it like Whitney. Now, come on, come on. Dolly may have wrote it, but she can't sing it like Whitney sang it. Oh, amen. Y'all help me now. Uh, oh, I, I know some of y'all gonna get this. Roberta Flack. That went over their heads. Come on, Karen, Tammy. Y'all know what she sang. First time ever I saw you, Roberta Flack's love song. Diana Ross. Huh? No. Nope. Endless love. I know y'all get this one. Lionel Richie. Nope. Now y'all ain't raising your hand, Jan. You're disqualified. <laughs> Just to be close to you. Commodores wrote it, but Lionel Richie sang it and made it famous for the Commodores. That's my era. That's the that's the day. That's we in the 70s, if y'all don't know where we at. We in the 70s and the 80s. Amen. The love songs of our day. Uh, the Commodores. Come on, Karen. There you go. You got it. Those were just a few. Now, y'all ain't, ain't in the mood to play nothing, are you? You just yeah. want to preach it. Uh, now, I want to show you something, and I did that for a reason, because love songs were uh, 
mainly, and I'm, I know that was a carnal illustration of love songs, but to make my point, love songs and the lyrics that they were many times written about were uh, more than just the lyrics. They were strong expressions of emotional feeling of a relationship with somebody that you love. Now, what I can tell you is that the book of Psalms is that. It is a song book. It is the, uh, we get the word, listen to me, the Hebrew word tehillim, which means praise songs. And if you flip it around, we get the Greek definition of the word samola. That means songs of praise. And the English translation, which is written in the King James Bible, is the word psalms. It is a record of love songs recorded by a man by the name of David. Now, I want you to hold this thought, if you will, and I want him to put up 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 1. Why is this important? We're going to read one of the love songs of David. In Psalm, uh, 2 Samuel 23, we know that this man that we know so much about has a subtitle, if you will. We know that he was a man after God's own heart. Now, we know that David took a rock and slew Goliath. David was attributed to being a great king. His life was marred with a misstep, no doubt. He sinned with Bathsheba, we know that. But David had a subtitle uh, in his day. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, and the man who was raised up on high, watch this, the anointed of God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. Not only was David a man after God's own heart, but David was the one who pinned down the love songs of the Bible. Oh, yes, and if I were to take them tonight and divide them up, which I could, but I won't, uh, there are nearly 30-something songs that are called David's love songs, where David is describing a, 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 a personal relationship, a past experience that he has had with his God. Now, now I want to I go there, if you will, let me, uh, on more than one occasion, the psalmist David, as a matter of fact, in five recorded occasions, David would sing a song in the book of Psalms from an experience that he had in first or second Samuel. Now, I'm not going to turn and read these, but you could, I want you to write it down because I want you to check it out. I want you to do your own homework tonight. And I want you to go to, don't, not now, write down Psalms 59. Psalms 59 was the, uh, uh, the psalm that he wrote in from 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse number 11. David would make these, he would make these psalms and he would use the lyrics and the passages and see, we took the, the Hebrew songbook of David and applied scripture, and now we have the book of Psalms. But many of these Psalms, Lydia, David would either sing or quote with music or without music. He was the sweet psalmist of Israel. He was known to be a singing man. Right. Oh, yes, thank God for the influence of this man who would sing about his experiences with God. Now, you all know, you all know country music's born out of barroom experiences, don't you? And my wife left me with another man and all that stuff that goes with all that nonsense that goes on. It ain't like it was when, in the, in the, when I was a young man whole lot different. I'm not advocating any kind of music other than the Bible talks about spiritual music. That's the kind we ought to have in our lives. And David was a man who was known 
for singing many of his experiences with God. In Psalms 56, you will find the connector in 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15. You can look me up later. Don't do it now. Psalms 34, you can find the connection in 1 Samuel 21 and chapter number 22. So what I'm asking you to do later, maybe in your devotions this week, read those Psalms and then go to these uh, 1 Samuel passages and you will understand what David was writing, what he was singing, and what he had experienced with God that he put into a song. In Psalms 52, you will find it in 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse number 9. Now tonight, tonight, my, uh, my connecting psalm is found in Psalm 18. I want you to look at it with me now. I want us to read a portion of Psalm 18, not the whole thing. And then I'm going to show you the connector uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Now remember that the Psalm 18 is a psalm that is filled with David who's bubbling over with love for the Lord. The psalm begins with this, not looking through the eyes of love, but he says, I will love thee, O Lord. I wonder if we was to put music to that, what it would sound like. No need to bring David up. I'm sure you could hum it. I'm sure you could have no problem putting those words into a song. Amen. Right. David was the sweet. Psalm 18 was a song that he read having been through the experience of being hounded by the enemy of Saul and his army. Right. He is overwhelmed, he is overcome with relief and expresses emotion, and it's at the surface. I will love thee, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Look in verse 6. Here, here's, the, here's the inspiration from the song. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. And he heard my voice. And out of his temple and my cry came before him, even unto his ears, the occasion of Psalm 82. David has been delivered by God from the wrath of an angry, jealous King Saul who's chased him and hounded him and he's ran from city to city trying to escape, hid in the cave of Adullam and Brother Mo, now the psalmist has broke out in a love song to express to you and I what he was feeling, what he experienced, what he knew about God. Amen. Oh, thank God for a singing psalmist. Amen. Oh, now, my, look, if you will, in 2 Samuel chapter 22. Now, you got to hold your place in Psalm 18. 2 Samuel 22. And David, and now, you, does yours read like that? And David spake unto the Lord the words of this, what? Song. Y'all say that with me. Song. I'm talking about love songs tonight. Some of y'all got off on me on my introduction. I apologize. I wasn't trying to be worldly. I, I just wanted to get your attention a little bit. I know some of them songs have hung up in your mind now, ain't they? Some of y'all saying them. I want you to go out here singing this one. I will love thee, O Lord. I will love thee, O Lord. I want this one to resound in your mind. I want you to leave tonight in deep appreciation and for the experience and the emotion of having a God who is your rock. Amen. Oh, my. I can see this is going to be labor tonight. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. 
in the day that the Lord delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my what? And what did Psalm 18 say? The Lord is my rock. All right. In him will I trust uh, and my fortress and my deliverer. If you were to hold your place in 2 Samuel 22 and find your place back in Psalm number 18, you will see the repetitiousness of this particular passage. You will find out that David wrote Psalms chapter 18 having experienced a special deliverance from God, uh, from God from the hand of an angry, jealous Saul who sought to kill him. Great occasion for singing. The inspired songwriters always, after having experienced something with God and from God, would pin things down and write things down. Many of my personal experiences with God, God has inspired me to write little notes, little footnotes, if you will, right. so as to not forget them, Amen. to remind myself of the experience and the emotion that God put in my spirit Amen. at that time. And the Bible is very clear here in verse number two, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my rock in him will I trust. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Do you see the connection between 2 Samuel 22 and Psalms chapter 18? Do you, do you sufficiently see that this was an expression of an experience that the psalmist had went through and came out on the other side, Sister Jan, and I say he was singing. I mean, he, he was singing because he had been delivered and he recognizes, Brother Casey, that his deliverance was from the hand of his God. Amen. Worthy to be praised right. tonight. I said he is worthy to be praised tonight. I want to show you a couple of things that David is reminiscing here. Number one is found in verse number two. Go with me. Look at it. David says, the Lord is my rock. <laughs> mm. Not a whole lot of attractiveness to a rock. I've seen some ugly rocks. I've seen some rocks wasn't good enough for nothing but kicking. Huh? Not this rock. This is the rock that David said, God, the Lord, is my rock. Amen. Now, 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 this song that he's singing to the Lord is coming from an experience that he's had. He uses the metaphor, if you will, of a rock. A rock uh, can be solid. Uh, a rock is strong. Right. A rock is uh, many times unbreakable without uh, unnatural force. And what he's trying to say is, my God, my God is my safe place. Yeah. Amen. My God is the one that keeps me safe. Right. Now, if you know anything about caves, David in 1 Samuel, don't turn, chapter number 22, he's found himself hiding in the cave of Adullam. Yeah. Now, you all know how caves were made, don't you? Caves were dug out of what? Rocks. You had to break the rock out to get into the cave. And caves many times... And the rocks were referred to in the Bible as places of safety, if you will. I'd like for him to put up 1 Kings chapter 19, where we have that great prophet Elijah fleeing again from an angry, irate Jezebel. 
in 1 Kings chapter number 19 and verse number 8 and verse number 9. And the Bible says, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat and 40 days and 40 nights unto, the, unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither in unto a what? A cave made out of rock. If you study the Bible, you will find out that many of the Bible characters and the Bible places of safety can be associated and can be connected to caves or dwellings that were made hewn out of the rocks. Right. In Judges chapter number 6 and verse number 2 in Judges 6 and verse 2 and the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel and because the Midianites the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. What, what are you getting at, preacher? David is reminiscing. He is uh, describing in a song the extreme uh, emotion of experience that God was his safe place. Right. Uh, the, the, I don't know how you feel about this thing, but uh, the devil's after me every day, every hour. I, I, I don't, I don't, my safe place is my rock. Yeah, right. Preacher, I still don't know where you're going. Are you seriously, you don't know where I'm going? Uh, well, Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18, the Bible says, Peter, uh, upon this rock I'll build my church. Oh, rock of ages, cliff for me. Let me hide myself in thee. I'm glad tonight that I have a safe place. My safe place is God, amen. 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 And the psalmist David here is reflecting on this experience, running from Saul, and he finds himself in more than one occasion uh, hiding in a cave, a place hewn out by a rock. In the sixth chapter of the book of the Revelation, in verse number 15, I don't know if you'll put that one up. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. David in his first stanza of the song says and sings, the, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. Amen. He's where I hide. Yes, sir. Oh, rock of ages, rock of ages. Thank God I'm glad I have a solid foundation. Amen. I'm glad tonight that I can brag on my past experiences with extreme emotion. Right. God has hedged me in. Amen. God has took care of me. That's right. When the devil sought to hurt me, Amen. when the devil tried to kill me, yes. I'm glad I have a rock tonight, yes. and that rock yes. is God. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I want to tell you something tonight. I don't know if I'll get very far in this thing. Uh, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 33, I had to go here. Oh my, not only do I see this rock as a safe place, but I see this rock as a spiritual place. <laughs> Exodus chapter number 33, the Bible says in verse 19, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. <laughs> Woo! And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by, not only is my God my safe place, but my God is my spiritual place. 
My God can put me in a place where his goodness can be revealed to me. Happy day, happy day when I realized that God was my rock. He's the safe place for the child of God. He's the spiritual place that we go when the enemy is on our trail and he's hounding us and he's trying to ruin us. I'm glad we have a place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Rock. Man. Man, what a song. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you'll get this and maybe you won't. I know it sure did help me. Oh, my. I call this the Lord is my rock, my safe place, and my spiritual place. Number two can be found. Uh, oh, 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 wait a minute. We can't do that. We got to go over there to uh, 2 Samuel 22, verse 3. The God of my what? Rock. <laughs> and there it is, verse 2. He said, the Lord is my rock. <laughs> Thank God. These, saw, these, these passages are connected, Brother Larry, by an experience and turned into a song. Right, right. David was inspired by God being his rock. Now, back in Psalm 18, and you'll find these connectors, about, we won't go back and forth, we won't flip back and forth, but in Psalms chapter 18, he says here, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my, and my God, my strength. Now, let's just be, let's be transparent tonight. Can we just be transparent enough to say it's a fact. God's people get weary in well-doing. Right. right, yes, sir. I said God's people, if you're trying to live for God, I'm not complaining. I'm saying to you, that you can get weary in the walk of faith. Yes, sir. I mean, you can find yourself discouraged. Right. You can find yourself despondent. Yes, you can find yourself away from God. Right. You can find yourself out of your safe place. Yes. You can find your place being uh, not spiritual like you were. I mean, but, but here, here is David saying, I, I receive my strength from my God. I worry about people who run to the world when they have trouble. You're right. Yeah. Go ahead. I said I worry about people who, when the world goes upside down, they go everywhere but God. You're right. I go from strength to strength. Yeah. I go till I can't go no more. That's right. I keep going when I don't feel like it. Right. And when I get to that safe place, when I get to God, he will give me the strength yeah. that I need. David was weary. You study it. You read 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, while David was fleeing from this angry man trying to kill him. He had people, he had armies chasing after him. David would spend the night one place and have to get up the next day and leave and go 100 miles to get away from him. Oh, my. He got weary, got tired. David is singing this song, and he says, The Lord is my strength. Now, knowing something of the history of the Israelite people, in the 17th chapter of the book of Exodus, Moses has been leading the people. They begin to get weary. They begin to get loathsome. They begin to get a little uh, critical, and they start murmuring. Yeah. And, and, and they murmur to the man of God, right. and they say, we should have died in Egypt. What would you bring us out here for? We're going to starve to death. They, Brother Larry, what was happening was the traveling, they were getting weary and were not being sufficiently uh, strengthened in their daily walk. So God tells Moses in an amazing passage of scripture, he tells him to go, and I want him to put it up. Uh, you go, uh, so, uh, uh, notice with me, if you look at it in Exodus uh, chapter number 17 and verse 1, I got to show you this now. I'm trying to hurry, Exodus chapter 17 and verse 1, and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin. That's what sin is. It's a wilderness. Right. Sure does get weary living in this low land of sorrow. Amen. 
And wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. You know what water does? Water will strengthen you. Water will supply you. Water will sufficiently give you energy. Man. That's why we drink water. We have energy drinks. And the people of God had gotten weary and they were without strength. David is saying, God is my rock. God is my strength. I get my help. I get my strength from the Lord. Listen, if you're dependent on your brothers and sisters to live for God, you, you're not going to make it very far. Right, brother. Every one of us get weary in yeah. well-doing. Right. And you're going to need a source of strength Amen. that can provide you with the strength that you need. Amen. And I am not talking about physical strength, though the application is there. In chapter 17, if you'll notice with me in verse number 6, verse 5, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, when, with, where, wherewith thou smotest the river, take it in thine hand and go. And behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the what? The rock, and there shall come water out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. What are you saying, preacher? Thank God there is strength from the smitten rock. I said there is strength from the smitten rock of Jesus. The rock of ages was smitten on Calvary for you and I to be able to come to him on a regular basis and get mercy and get help in a time of need. Amen. When you get weary, you got a rock. He'll be yeah. your safe place. He'll be your strengthener, thank God. Right. Oh yes, a smitten rock is where the strength lies. So put up Psalms chapter 73. I love this. Woo. Mm. I got Holy Ghost chill on that one. I done gone charismatic. Psalm 73, 26. Your flesh ever get weary? Come on now. Sure. Well, you wait till you hit 60, about 63. You start really realizing how, how weary your flesh can get. Boy, this old body don't want to work right most of the time. Hello? My flesh and my heart faileth. Not only can we get Brother Larry, can we get physically down? We can get spiritually down. He says, my flesh and my heart. The heart is a center of emotion. The heart is, a, the heart is what man believeth unto salvation. And we're talking about a spiritual problem. We're talking about, listen, when you get a flesh problem and a spiritual problem, you need some help. Amen? Amen? You need help. But God is the what? The strength of my heart and my portion forever. What I am, what I am uh, proposing to you tonight is that the psalmist David was reflecting on an experience having gone through what he went through. And he's trying to tell us through, through the written word of the Hebrew songbook, he, he's trying to tell us that God will be your safe place. God will be the person that will give you the strength that you need. He uses the word rock and fortress. That means he is your safety and he is your strength provider. Now let me give you another one. Look, look, if you will, in Psalms 18. Are y'all okay? I'll be done. Just give me a mate. Well, I have 10 more minutes. We'll be done. Psalms chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock. I, 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 would, I, I wish we could, I don't know how you put music to these kind of things, but I do know this. David was a singer. He would sing these passages he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. And now he says something else. He says, he's 
my buckler. I want you to put up my picture, my buckler. Put this up. I want to show you something tonight. Now, you hold your place there in 2 Samuel chapter number 22. He calls this in chapter 22. He is the rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Verse 3, the God of my rock and whom I will trust. He's my shield. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation. Now, this buckler, this buckler that he's describing was intended, stay with me, a full body protected. Now, we know that according to Ephesians, we're to put on the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We know we're to have all those parts on. But David is saying that God is my rock. He's my safety. God is my strength. He's my supplier. And he's saying God is my shield. God is my protector. But Brother Casey, this is typically a full body frontal protection. Now, what I'm trying to get across to you tonight, if you look at both of these passages, you will find out the connection is this. David went through many battles, and, and God protected him. And I don't know if you realize this tonight, but God being your rock, God being your strength, God is also your shield. And if the devil could, if the devil could, he would bring great harm and destruction to your life. But he cannot because you are being protected by a buckler, by a shield, Amen. and that shield is God. Right. right. I don't know how many times I would say the devil's had my back several times and would have liked to have taken me out of this world. And I would say that God has kept me from more harm than the devil could inflict on me in any given year. I don't know if it was at traffic lights or hunting experiences or, or just every day out and about, but I know this, God does a pretty good job of protecting me. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful. I don't want to live outside the umbrella. I don't want to live outside my buckler. That's right. yep. I, I don't want to throw my shield away. Yep. I don't want to walk away from the one, the very one who's going to take care of me. Yeah. David is singing this from the bottom of his heart. He's grateful that nobody got him with a stray arrow. Nobody got him with a sword. Nobody got him with a knife. Remember when, when, when Saul threw the javelin? Whew, boop, God made sure he missed. Hey, hallelujah, I'm glad I've got a buckler tonight. I'm glad I've got a shield. I'm going to show you something. If this, don't, if this don't get you hallelujah, then we might as well go home and eat a biscuit or bread. Put up Psalms 91. Oh, man. Oh, Psalm 91, verse 4. <laughs> Woo, I had to leave the office on this one, Casey. Had to leave the office on this. I'm not kidding you. Had to leave the office on this one. He shall cover thee with his what? Feathers. And under his shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy. Y'all ain't picking up what I'm laying down. It went right over y'all's head. The shield and the buckler that I have has wings and it has feathers. Right. <clears throat> no, it's not the eagle. It's the dove. Yeah. It's the Holy Ghost Amen. who's living on the inside of Amen. me. Right. And when he moved on the inside, mm, oh, when he moved on to the inside, he put a stamp and a seal right. 
unto the day of redemption. And here's what it says. It's almost like a postmark. Sign, sealed, waiting to be delivered. Don't mess with him. He belongs to me. I'm glad tonight I have a buckler. I have a shield in the person of the Holy Spirit. Never leave me, never forsake me. <laughs> Ooh, well, I guess it's biscuit time. Boy, had a mercy, I had to leave my office. I said, Lord, I get it. I understand what David, why he was singing, why he was so happy, why he was so thrilled. Can you put up Isaiah chapter 54? I didn't give you this, I don't think, but I need you to put it up. Isaiah 54. Let's see how fast he is. That's what Bud said. Let's see how fast he is. Psalms 54, verse 17. Oh, yeah. Y'all like these screens? I like these screens. No. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. God says, I got you. Man. I got you. Thank God. I got you covered on the front. Yeah. And I got you covered no matter which way you turn. Amen. I got you. I'm here to tell you tonight. I'm here to tell you that this love song has special meaning. Let me close with my final thought. Not really done, but I think you are. <clears throat> Psalms. Chapter 18 and verse number 2. He says, he is my buckler and the horn of my salvation. I had, a, I had a little struggle with this. I couldn't quite figure out exactly what David was singing here. But you will find it in both connecting passages of scripture. The horn, he says... Of my what? Salvation. Now, the only way for me to explain this to you will be to reflect back on our passage in Genesis 22, where the Bible says, When Abraham drew back that knife, Brother Ben, and he went to slay his son Isaac, and the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham! And he said, Don't do him no harm. Don't do any harm to your boy. And the the two verses later it says, And Abraham looked and beheld a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. <laughs> the horn of my salvation. You know who provided for my salvation? Jesus did. Amen. He is the horn of our salvation. Now, in typology, we know that Isaac and this, this passage, because we dealt with it extensively, is a great, wonderful lesson of redemption. Amen. How God provided us his son. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen. The, these horns, and I, he's going to put up Exodus 27, and I'll be done. Brother David, you can come on because I'm, I'm not going to labor this. I just, wanna, I just want you to see it. Uh, and you can look at it later when you get home. In Exodus chapter 27, verse 1 and 2, this is, of course, the instructions that they're receiving for the tabernacle in the wilderness. And thou shalt make the altar... Y'all like that word altar? I do. Of shit and wood, five cubits long, five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square. Height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the, the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with brass. Horns. On the altar. Yep. Stay with me. Leviticus. You'll see it right now. Chapter number 8. Leviticus 8. Verse 14. 
I'm going to read verse 13. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles and put bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. And he brought the bullock for the sin offering. There it is. Sin offering. And Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock for the sin offering. And he slew it. And Moses took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar. David say, sings, he is the horn of my salvation. Amen. His blood is the reason I'm saved tonight. Amen. It's the blood for the sin offering that was applied to the old tabernacle. Thank God I'm glad the blood has been applied to my heart and my life by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Glad I've got the horn of my salvation. Verse 15, he slew it and Moses took the blood, put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger, purified the altar and poured the blood at the bottom of the altar and sanctified it to make reconciliation upon it. <laughs> Thank God. Reconciliation is made by the horn of the altar. The horn of our salvation. Last verse. Luke chapter 1, verse 69. We know that Luke's gospel, chapter 1 and 2, that introduction of Christ being born. Look at Luke 1, 69. And it raised up a horn of salvation for us and the house of his servant David, talking about Jesus. I want you to know something tonight. That blood that was applied to the horns of the altar for the sin offering. Brother Larry, my sin that I had never committed because I wasn't even born was taken care of. Yeah, right. And Jesus died on the cross. Yes, right. Every sin of Adam, every sinner, hello, every sinner, the blood will save any and all sinners who will come and confess Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that if you sin this week, that blood that was applied on the horn of salvation will forgive you because the blood is still there. Do you realize tonight that 1 John says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. That that the horns, the blood on the altar, the sacrifice of Jesus, still paying for the penalty of sin. But the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brother David's playing very softly. Uh, Something else those horns were used for, Lydia. In the Bible, horns were used for oil. Remember when Samuel went and anointed David? The Bible said he took the horn and poured that oil. I'm glad I've got a horn of my salvation. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Yeah. I'm glad I chose to be at Wednesday night church. I, if I could sing that psalm, I'd sing it, but I can't. But David did. I got to walking around here today singing, The Lord is my rock. And then you know, some of y'all threw in there, And my roll. No, my name is on the roll because of the rock. Amen. That ain't rock and roll. Yes, That's just the rock and the roll. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss it. I'm about to go right by you. Thank God I've got a horn of salvation. Amen. That horn is used for anointing oil. You want to know what else that horn is used for? <laughs> Whoop! First Thessalonians chapter number 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, 
Y'all ever heard of a shofar? I don't know what you're waiting on, but I'm waiting on the trumpet. You know who's going to blow it? My rock, my strength, my shield. Oh, thank God. Would you stand with me, please? I'll be honest with you. I brought to you what the Lord gave me to give you. David singing, celebrating the goodness of God. That's what he was doing. No, he was singing because God had delivered him from his enemies. Sir, that's right. Thank you, Lord. And he used these metaphors of the rock and the shield right. and the buckler and the horn of salvation. He used them to tell us what he was feeling. What a love song. That's better than old Percy Sledge. That's better than the Commodores. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the day. Lord, thank you for these Bible truths that you let me walk through. If but for me, that's okay, Lord. I needed it. I not only needed it, but I wanted it. I was hungry to feel your spirit move and speak to my heart. And I pray for these folks tonight, Lord. I know I've said something that somebody could use or they could get help from. And I pray you'd help them to make the application. Let them know that you'll be exactly what they need when they need deliverance. When they need a spring in their step and a song in their heart, I know that you will provide. Bless them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ushers, let's receive the Lord's tithe and the Lord's offering, okay? All right. One last thing to do. Get the money. <laughs>